That's been, and so please describe to me what the aesthetic look is exactly. More like this guy here. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll go ahead and read Oh, wow, you really have to come in here? Is this, no, what, is this really happening? He, he met the other guy behind you, bro. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I'm right into that bad boy. You can stay right there, behind the camera. <laughs> behind the camera. No, see, now that you got me jealous now. That's okay. That's not so fair. You're, you're more in the, the category, like, the uh, Luther Rector Arnold, okay? My man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Arnold. Perigno. Huh? Okay. okay. Aesthetic. <laughs>
Which words were like little toy kinds No sting, no hurt, no one Just a bang, bang Right? Is that it's, it? Yeah, it's, it's something like that. Just a bang, Toy bang, guns. rolling off your tongue. <laughs> Toy guns. It's no smoke, no bullets. Bang, bang. Water guns. All right. P-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters catching feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause Sandy Wiss is ready So get about it, goodbye Hold up, we just saying hi Five somebody, rise up Weekdays, catch us live Somebody, let's go Good morning, everybody And welcome to the Pascal Show Yes Good morning, everybody. Let me adjust this camera because it always seems like I always think that I got this thing on point, and then it always right when it right when it gets onto my face, I'm like, wow, that was totally totally off. What's up, everybody? Good morning. It's Monday. Time to wake up and do something dope today. Do something positive. Do something motivational because every single day is an opportunity. An opportunity to turn it all the way around. I hope you guys are having a marvelous Monday. It is the last day of summer. Now, the, what's funny to me is that there are a lot of people who are saying, like I've been hearing the you know meteorologists on, on, on TV and everything. Some of them are saying today is the last day of summer. Some are saying today is the first day of fall. I don't know which one it is. All I know it is, all I know is this. To me, it's fall, y'all. So, happy fall. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your cup of coffee this morning. We got Jack in the house, man. What's up, baby? What, what is up? up? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Mm-hmm. Doing well, man. Yeah, it's the start of autumn. It you is know? the start. Uh, tomorrow's the uh, autumnal equinox. Uh, and so we're actually got an equal day and night. And so like the amount of time in the morning and the evening is exactly the same, supposedly. T tomorrow. So, you know, tomorrow. Today, uh, you know, it's the last day. I, I like to say it's the last day of summer. You got to celebrate, you know, the end of summer. Because, but it's not warm outside anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> no, it's not. The end is nigh. Is that what you're trying to say? We got to we got to celebrate yeah. it like the end is nigh. Oh, hey. hamburger. You know, here it is. Like, um, I, I, I really I did enjoy the summer. Why? Because there was opportunities and reasons to go outside and be outside. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like this summer wasn't too bad as far as heat. I'll, I'll be straight funky where we are. It wasn't that bad. But at the same time, at the same time, though, whoo, um, I'm excited about fall because you get to wear hoodies. You know what I mean? Long sleeve, long sleeve shirts, get a little cozy. You know what I'm saying? Also, cuffing season's just about to get started for all you fellas out there that are trying to, uh, you know, cuff up or run away from the cuffing. Tis the season to be cuff and okay. Anyway, here it is though. I'm worried because if we keep being on this lockdown, if we keep getting locked up, what are we gonna do in regards to like restaurants, um, bars? Because still people are still wanting to go out and kick it. Still people are gonna want to go out and do their thing. Things are about to get cold and real wet out here, y'all. And I'm wondering how they're gonna be able to accomplish everything that they want to do businesses are able to accomplish what they want to do when it gets cold and you got to be in in closed places you know what i'm saying yeah it's something to think about hmm seriously interesting you know like uh outdoor events is fine because you're outdoors yeah. it's you know it's you're outside in in, in the uh, open air so all those things don't circulate they don't come back to you all that stuff right but then now that things are going to get cold and people are going to get sick as far as like the just the regular common cold and you're out and these people are all sniffing and coughing and everyone's going to be like dodging you know what i'm saying everybody's head is going to mm -hmm. be on a swivel now when you want to go out and that kind of sucks that kind of sucks so I'm, I'm worried like everybody else every other spot that that doesn't like every state that's uh all these southern states that don't have winter ever 
or you know that it's 75 degrees every single day they don't really have much to worry about but i worry about the northern states where and and also the state that we're in too where things just get warm like get cold you know cold and wet and and really really nasty out Mm. how are these businesses going to be able to continue whilst fighting off this rona i'm just curious Mm. i I think i'm going to get in the business of selling those outdoor heat lamps uh because Uh. i think that that's going to be a hot commodity no pun intended uh coming up here (laughs) Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that's actually all really the bars idea. are gonna be everybody, everybody's gonna be outside. I think real talk. You know, that's, like those, those heaters standing underneath them. Real talk. That's a, that's actually a brilliant idea. No lie. Get no yourself lie. a Pascal show heater. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> Put your name on anything on everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get yourself some uh, Pascal show cigarettes. You know, oh. just everything. Just <laughs> everything. everything. Just every damn thing. You know, why the hell not? Good morning to everybody that's watching right now. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning, Demi. Debbie. Uh, good morning, uh, Tanny Vane. Good morning, Jack. Hi. Good morning, Zozo Bob. What's up? Good morning. Thank you. Come on in. The, the water is warm. You know what I mean? We've been keeping this water warm for you. It's a hot tub up in this piece now because it's fall. You know what I'm saying? It ain't a pool no more. It's cold out here now, y'all. I'm wearing a hoodie for a reason because it's cold outside, y'all. So jump on in. Come on in. Step right out. Step right up. Jump on in. I don't know. That sounds like a theme song to something. But anyway. Yeah, it is something. Step right up. Jump on in. Something like that, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I can't place it, though. I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't believe I have that in my head. But anyway. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful and fantastic morning. Comment down below. Let me know that you had a wonderful and successful weekend this weekend. All right. I hope you guys did something really incredible, really dope. You know, I got to spend time with my family. That was really, really nice. You know, my extended family. Uh, my my brother-in-law celebrated his birthday this this work weekend. So that was really nice. Got to spend time with the family and the kids and the and my sisters and all that stuff. So that was really nice. You know what I'm saying? How about you, Jack? How was your weekend? We had, we had an interesting Saturday. Um, really? The, so my wife's family's, like her dad's side of the family, her grandfather uh, basically grew up on a farm over in Trenton, Illinois, which is about an hour away from St. Louis. And they had uh, three different farmhouses that are on this land. Uh, one of them has been vacant for years. Uh, I mean, dilapidated, like basement filled to three to four feet of water. Um, and just, you know, unoccupiable, condemned. Uh, well, they finally got all of like the asbestos roofing off and siding, and then they donated it to the fire department, uh, in Illinois to be able to use as a training center. Uh And so this Saturday, the weather was right and the winds were low. Uh, so they came out there and did some drills and we were out there and watching this. They did some drills, like actually burning down that house. And so they would go in and had all like people from three hours away within Illinois, all these different fire departments are coming over to do training. And so wow. they set this place on fire and we're going in and, you know, putting it out and testing out different ways of, you know, like, I guess limiting the smoke amounts and all this type of stuff. And, uh, but then at the end, after lunch, they, they set the whole thing on fire and we watched that thing burn to the ground. That's dope. Uh, and so, but we were about, you know, maybe 50 feet away from it and still able to feel, feel all the heat that was coming from it. That's incredible. Uh, it was a, a very interesting thing to see, but it was like a lot of history because like um, my wife's great grandmother was born in the house in 1891 or 1893. Yeah. Uh, and, and like literally born in the home um, and like family lived there like their whole life. Um, but the half of that family ended up dying because they're in the farm roads and the one of the like the cars are going and there's no stop signs and the corn fields are high. And a car came and smashed into the car, killing her great grandfather. Uh, and like it was a. You know, wow. one of those farm farm road accidents. You know, uh, wow. But it's uh, but it was pretty. It was pretty interesting. You know, kind of uh, one of the things you don't see every day for sure. No, no. Uh, well, the rest of the world's burning not on purpose. You know, we're going and having our farmhouse set on fire on purpose. So. Yeah, I was about <laughs> like, to say. I, I was I was kind of about to say like, what was Antifa? Did some Antifa dude run up with right. a Molotov cocktail <laughs> and just blast it? You know what I'm saying? Um, right. I was expecting something crazy like that. Some crazy story like that. What? But um. I, I can only imagine it being uh, extremely emotional. See that? Yeah, hold on. Give it a second. Yes, now we do. Oh, wow. 
That's yeah. insane, bro. That's yeah. insane, homie. I mean, just full on. Like, yeah, it, it is emotional. I mean, you got a family that's living there, uh, you know, their whole life, and uh, it is. Yeah. No, it's pretty cool to see. I, I took some videos and stuff. Uh, it's an emotional thing, man. Yeah, seriously. But, you know, it's interesting to see how long a a roof will stand while windows have flames just like yeah billowing out, and then finally the roof, like part of it, started to burn enough to where the back half of the house collapsed. And they're like the front left corner was like still standing to like the very last end. But question though, why why burn it to the ground though? Why not just like, demolish it? I don't I don't get it. For them to pra to practice because the fire department was asked like they're always looking for facilities besides ah, okay. using I'm, like their training I missed like, that location part. an actual house to use. Uh, and that's why like people from like Champaign and uh, Urbana and stuff were coming in uh, like two and a half hours away from there to train. So they had a whole bunch of different fire departments that were there. That's wild. Yeah. That's wild. It's, good. it's a good time, though. Uh, and so I didn't bring any marshmallows. <laughs> I was. <laughs> That's a good one. I was excited. <laughs> you should have. Where the yeah. where are the sausages with the twigs? That's you know right. what I mean? I need a really, really like long this. stick. <laughs> a really <laughs> long stick. Oh, that's amazing. That's everything. Thank you so much for that, Jack. But yeah, I mean, yeah. still, still, no matter what, that's a legacy. That is a a a, a piece of your your wife's history that now is yeah. gone. You know, um, and in such an interesting way to say goodbye right. to um, a, a, a place where like the, the foundation of where y you've come from, like the origin story of where you've, you know, where you've come from right. is, is really uh, crazy. And uh, like I said, just a really emotional experience. I can only imagine yeah. if you, your wife got a, a little emotional about it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy, you know, a lot of memories there. Lots. So. <laughs> generations of, yeah. of memories there so centuries worth <laughs> so right right and it's, it's beautiful oh wait uh do they still have the land do they still own the land yes they own the land oh, they got nice. uh there's extended family that has cows and stuff that are over there that end up turning into steaks uh and, and then they have uh some wheat and corn and soy boi soybeans that are on the land too soybeans uh so that soy 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 boys so you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh the uh but yeah the you know they have extended family that still farms the land, um, nice. and then they have a couple uh, little houses that are, that are rented out to some people over That's there. That's dope, man. And so that's yeah. hella dope, man. It's uh, I guess eventually it'll be passed down through the family, and um, I don't know if I'll ever become a farmer though. I just hey, you're already growing things in your backyard. You never know. You never yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Weird. It's a little bit happen. different though. Uh, the amount of flies that are on a car on a cow farm are just. They're too much, man. I don't like getting like two flies in the house. Facts. I can't. I can't like be walking and have flies just like swarming all over the place. Yeah, you you a city yeah. slicker. That's all. Yeah. You you a city slicker. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> hey, Mr. Super. Good morning, Mr. Super. Mr. Super yeah. said, uh, "Farmer Jack." Yeah, I need you know a straw I mean? hat. Well, <laughs> and you gotta talk like this. You know, we'll talk like well. The corn's about to time for harvest. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like some sling blade three, stuff. 3 a.m. Time to wake up. It's again. 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Chewing some tobacco. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so that was my weekend. <laughs> that's dope. Yeah. But I mean, that, that's an exciting experience. Just to see that yeah, in was. real life. And, it, and, and it's not, it wasn't routed or sprouted from violence. It was actually yeah. something that you did. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That uh, that you got. It was a premeditated decision, and there were far, firefighters there, uh, v like vol uh, firefighters to train. The, they're all right. trainees, so that was that's really cool to see them do their thing, putting this fire out. Did they put the fire out, or did they no, just no, let they, the? I mean, they put burn? out little like for three hours. They did training sessions in each different room, mm -hmm. um, and then by the time that they are ready to burn the whole thing down, like basically the second story floorboards were already gone, yeah. walls were already burnt down. Uh, windows busted out so it's uh interesting yeah. interesting okay okay they burnt that thing to the ground wow. so That's i guess funny. the water that was in the basement put it out so <laughs> that's yeah. That's funny, man. Um, it, actually, Mr. Super said something, too. Uh, he said, we wake up at 4, 4 a.m. It's not that bad. Uh, I get to watch Pascal during lunch break. Now, I'm huh. wondering, Mr. Super, I don't think I've ever asked you this directly. So I'm going to ask you right now. What is it that you do that you have to be up at 4 o'clock in the morning? Unless you're just somebody who likes to be, like, is just an early riser. 
I'm just curious. What what is your uh, what is your occupation? I don't think I've ever gotten that. And if you have told me, I'm sorry. I'm a jerk. Moving on. <laughs> um, and also, yeah, that uh, Zozo Zozo. <laughs> oh, he's a farmer. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Super. I'm sorry if if you took any offense to the mm -hmm, the sling blade thing. I'm sorry. We, you know we are we need our farmers. They are yeah, the backbone of this country. He was right at home. Country. He was doing it too with us. Yeah, yeah, he, he probably was. <laughs> <laughs> he's good, and he's as I'm talking about the tobacco, he's pulling out his dip, and he's like, <laughs> mm, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> Anyway, um, now we got Pascal show spittoons on sale, too. Exactly. Now we got those. <laughs> Speaking of cigarettes, <laughs> if you really want to get that cancer real quick in your jaw, come and get some tobacco, <laughs> some chew brought to you by the Pascal show. I'm totally kidding. Don't do that. Seven hundred and seventy eight <laughs> acres of corn. Bruh, that's in that's insane. That's incredible. Mm. Wow. And he's in Pennsylvania. Mm. He's in Pennsylvania. That's what's up. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, but real quick before we move on to the next to our stories and everything back to our stories. Um, I do have something really cool. I wanted to share with everybody, but I did not download it. Right row. Right row. Um, it takes two seconds. It'll be fine. Um, so there is something that I'm very excited about. Um, I am doing a I am doing an interview with uh this lovely lady. I need to pull this up real quick so we can see it all. So, uh tomorrow tomorrow evening at 8:30 p.m. Central Standard Time, I will be interviewing Summer Bunny live on the show. That's right. Summer Bunny live on the show at 8 30 p.m central standard time so usually my my show starts at 7 p.m uh to, on this particular show tomorrow it's going to be a little bit different time it's going to be a different time because obviously um you know this is the only time that she was able to do it and uh of course i just want to be able to focus just on that interview but we will be doing it live. So every single person that's tuning in, watching the show, being a part of it can actually ask her questions live on the show. Um, and then she will be answering them right then and there. I'll be reading them out loud. I mean, of course, I'm going to be doing my own interviews, my own, you know, I'll be conducting my own piece of interview. But at the same time, I'll be able to uh, read some of your comments and literally ask them on live on the show. So I'm very, very excited about that. That's very, uh, a very big story, a very big deal. Now, if you don't know who Summer Bunny is, I, I did a video about her, a little pop up video about her uh, on Friday. Or I think it was Saturday. I'm sorry. Saturday morning. Uh, here it is. She is the, she is the, okay, so when Cardi B and Offset decided to break up the first time, well, when Cardi B was done with him because he was caught cheating, he was allegedly having an affair with Summer Bunny, mm. okay, the first time. This is the first time. Now, Cardi B just recently came out saying that she's having a divorce. She's, she's filing for divorce from Offset last week, right? Now these big rumors have been circulating around about summer about Offset being with Summer Bunny, all right? Now, Summer Bunny, uh, I got uh, in contact with her, and she gave me some information, and I talk about it in this pop-up video. But because of that, the video did fairly well. People have been sharing it, looking at it. It's, been, it's all over IG. People have been talking about it. So because of that, we are sitting down doing a Skype interview, basically, uh, live, and we're going to talk about everything. We're going to get down to, to the nitty gritty. I mean, she is pregnant with twins. People are saying that the twins are Offset's babies, but they're not. Um, so we're going to be talking about all that and many, many other things. Her opinions on what's going on with the divorce, what it's like to be, you know, how how life has been, given the fact that she has been labeled labeled a homewrecker. Um, still to this day um, and seeing how that's been affecting her life since that day and how all this stuff is kind of resurfacing again because of the the announcement of Cardi B and Offset's divorce. So she will be here tomorrow evening at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time live to talk about everything. And the thing is, is that 
you guys get to ask her questions live on the show too. Isn't that exciting? So you guys get to be a part of it. If I find something that's good, I'm going to ask live on the show. I'm going to ask her that question live on the show. So it's exciting. So be sure to tune into that because that one's going to be fire. Absolute fire. And then mm-hmm. Friday morning, I got Logic D. Collins on the show, back on the show again. He's on the hit show, BT's hit show, The Oval. He's coming back again. He's also in the new uh, Jennifer Hudson, uh, the Jennifer Hudson, Aretha Franklin biopic, Respect, which is going to be dropping here very, very soon. So he's going to be on on Friday morning. So we're going to be chopping it up with him on Friday morning. It's going to be amazing. It's going to, it's going to be great to have a good friend back on the show again to talk about all the stuff that's been going on. Like they just got wrapped. They just wrapped uh, shooting the second season of Oval with Tyler Perry. So that is something, some really exciting stuff. And then the new movie that's coming out in the next month or two. So there's a lot that's going on this week. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a great week. Um, so be a part of the fun. So Tuesday evening is going to be fun, y'all. That t- Tuesday evening is going to be weird. Of all things, is Tuesday is going to be. I'm going to be real. It's going to be weird. So wait, be weird. how did you get introduced to her and that hookup? Well, you want to you want to know the real the real truth? You want to know My the space? real deal? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I called her on my rotary phone. Um, yeah. So what, what, what happened? Okay, so what happened was was this. All right, here's a quick story, and then we can go into the news. All right. So when Cardi B announced that she was getting divorced or she was filing for a divorce, I did a pop up video about that. Right. I said I wasn't surprised, but then of course I talked about Offset and his wayward ways, running after scattered ass, and I mentioned how Summer Bunny was the girl that was cheating was was part of the uh the extramarital affair he was having an extramarital affair with summer bunny so i said this in the in the video i put it up on ig i tagged her name i tag i put it in the the hashtags summer Mm -hmm. bunny so she hit me up she dm me basically saying hey guys uh, he, she was like, hey, I see that you just mentioned my name in this video. If you want the real truth, I'll give you the real truth. All right. And so I was just like, okay, sure. Come on with it. At first I was like, is this real? Mm-hmm. Are you real? So then, of course, I did my research and everything. I did my deep dive, found out. Um, I found out that it was real. That was really her IG. Then she starts going. She starts giving me screenshots and photos and video. And and she's like, I am going to be reannouncing that I am pregnant with twins. Why don't you break the story? So I was just like, okay, sure. So then that's when I was, you know, and the fact Mm -hmm. that it's not Offset's babies, Mm -hmm. that it's somebody else's Chauncey Gardner Johnson's babies. He's a safety for the uh, um, for the for the Saints. And so that's basically what it was. And then after that, I was just like, okay, I'll put out this video. I'll do that. So I did the video. And of course, I'm sitting there. I believe everything I said is true. I'm not trying to BS or anything. But after that, I was just like, you know what? I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push for an interview. I'm just going to push for it. Because mm-hmm. I, I don't need to break this story. I don't. But I'm going to do it anyway. Here it is. But I'm going to speak my, my truth. I'm going to speak my opinion on it. I think everybody, I think people deserve a second chance. And I hmm. think if people move on and, and do more with their life other than just being, let's just say, labeled as a homewrecker and they're just trying to move on with their life, like, hey, people make mistakes, all that. And I say that in the video. So she was really hmm. appreciative of the video. And I said, hey, I really want to do this interview. You know, I really want to get this interview with you. And she said, okay, I could do Tuesday night. I'm like, bet, Tuesday it is. So I said, it's going to be live. People are going to be tuning in. I'm going to be reading questions from the from the you know from the gallery, you right. know what I mean, from the chat room. And she's open to it, and she's like, "Yes, I'm fine with that." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, let's go." So she's going to be real. Yeah, it's going to be. Ish is about to get real. So I, I, you know, so 
I said, okay, let me see what happens. What, before all that, I said, let me see what is going to happen once I put this video out. The, the video about her announcing having twins. So I did, so I send it to her. She's like, thank you so much. And I go, I'm going to see what she does. That's what I mean. I'm going to see what happens with mm-hmm. me sharing this thing. So I did that. So the next thing you know, she shares it on her IG story. She, oh. she puts it out there and it just goes, goes crazy on, on, in my version, in my version of crazy, it goes crazy. You know what I mean? On my IG. Right. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So then I put out the, the the thing where I'm saying, hey, um, you know, the the flyer announcing that she's going to be on the show. She shares it on her. She literally takes it and she puts it on her on her page. Instead of just sharing it on IG, she puts it on her page saying it's mm. about to go. It's about to go down on the Pascal show. I'm like, oh, my God. OK, right. so it's real. So tomorrow more tomorrow evening. Sorry. 830 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's about to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? We're about to get the news, the the real story, her opinions about the divorce, her opinions about Offset, her opinions about Cardi B. There's a lot of speculations about other things where I guess there's another, apparently there's another woman that is literally pregnant with Offset's baby. So like a side baby's out there somewhere. And apparently Cardi B and Cardi B's people have been going out trying to basically like harass this woman to try to get her to get rid of the baby. Yeah. Hence the reason why she's wanting to divorce now. I think because she doesn't have control over the situation anymore. So, but that's all rumor stuff. I like to get a little bit of the facts and what's really going on in the world. So tomorrow we're going to get the facts. We're going to talk about those things, and hopefully she'll be able to squash some rumors that are going on and circulating about her. And, of course, here's some information and in her opinions about what's going on in the world. You know what I mean? Because, you know, this this channel really isn't a, uh, you know, rumor. Rumor has it. You know what I mean? Lady Gaga has a penis. Like, I, I really, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't succumb to that crap. I wait for the facts to be in my face. You see what I'm saying? So. Let's jump on into some factual stuff, shall we? Now, we do have a story. Okay, of course, as we already know, I broke the story on Friday night about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, about her death. Um, And it's it's a terrible, terrible story. Um, She did an amazing amount of things in her her lifetime, uh, more than I can even say that I've done in my lifetime so far. She has done... She's done leaps and bounds <laughs> to uh, law and, and uh, politics, and uh, may she rest in peace. And I really say thank you to what she's done for this country and what she's done for law and for women in, in, in general. Um, but now, now this is what's interesting. So she said before she passed, this is like a, a while back, she said, she said, I would like to have someone repla- take my seat when there's a new president appointed, when there's a new elected president, meaning when this term is over, she would like to have somebody else take her, take her slot because she, she was planning on uh, retiring within the next five, like four or five years. Now she, of course, uh, you know, she, her life ended now. Um, a little early, um, more than uh, earlier than expected. But now she's sitting here. Now she said that's one of her wishes that she w- she would like her one of her quest requests that she would like for someone to take over her slot when a new president is elected. Well, guess what? Trump is planning on replacing RBG slot this week. Now, let me say this really quick. There is. um. The elections haven't happened. Last time I checked, elections haven't happened. Haven't happened at all yet. I mean, l- let me check the time real quick. Let me check mm-hmm. the month. Yeah, it's September 21st, y'all. You know what I mean? This is the last or first day of the of fall or first last day of summer, first day of fall, allegedly, because these weather guys can't get it right. But anyway, moving on. He finds out about this and he is jumping on it. You know what I mean? I'm serious. Isn't it crazy? Ba, 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 
on Trump. Jump on it. Jump on it. Jump. On. He's jumping on it hard. OK, so as much as she said that was one of her. Let's just say that was one of her dying last dying wishes. Let's just say it was. And out of respect for what she's done for this country and what she's done for law and what she's done for women's rights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Trump is now saying, ah! I'm, I'm, I'm going to be announcing the new the new person that's going to take her seat this week. Oh, but it's going to be a very wonderful, amazing, amazing woman. Did I tell you that she's wonderful and amazing? It's a woman, though. Did I tell you that she's a woman? Because she's a woman. Mm. Jack, come on, man. So <laughs> uh, one of her like last statements or things that she had left before she died was saying my most fervent wit fervent wish is that I will not be replaced until a new president is installed to which an hour ago, Trump responded with Fox and friends saying, I don't know that she said that, or was that written out by Adam Schiff or Pelosi? I'd be more, I'd be more inclined to the second. Okay. You know, that came out of the wind. That sounds so beautiful, but that sounds like a Schumer deal or maybe Pelosi or for Shifty Schiff. So that came out of the wind. Let's say, I mean, maybe she did and maybe she didn't. Uh, so uh, her last dying wish is not to be replaced until somebody else is there. Now the president is saying, nah, I don't know if she said it. Uh, it was probably somebody else that wrote it. <laughs> now, now, here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this here. Uh, Chucka, um, thank you for the comments, Chucka. Good morning. Um, said question is why should we uh, why should her wishes be respected it is not like her box of jewelry so good question very good question uh, can i is it all right if i just jump on this really quick mm -hmm. uh jack okay here it is how about having respect and, and, and this is not directed towards you chucka i appreciate the question so i'm going to answer it as candidly as i possibly can here it is this is somebody who has dedicated their life to law their life to this country, their life to women's rights, all right, and many other things as well. I mean, that's just, those are just three bullets, this bang, bang, bang. Now, if somebody's done so many wonderful and great things for this country, wouldn't you try to at least, and they've dedicated decades of their life to law, wouldn't you try your best to honor that person's last wish, last wishes? Now I get it. It is not a possession. It is not a box of jewelry or anything of that like that. But it shows a certain side, a certain line of respect with everything. Now here it is, though. Trump, of course, is going to ignore all this stuff because it's an opportunity for him to take over. It's an opportunity for the Republicans to take over in in this particular in this particular space so much that. You know, he has been gunning hard on trying to get rid of Obamacare. Now, if you're bringing this, somebody else in who's Republican and might be seeing in uh, seeing things the way that that Trump is seeing things, Obamacare could very well be gone for good, depending on who he brings in to take over her seat. Now, the thing is, is I just feel that if she's done so much for this country, I just feel like it's a line, it's a sign of respect to just step back, let her seat be open just for a few more for it's only what, 40 some odd days, maybe less now till the, the election Just sit out. If if Trump really believes that he's going to be coming home with the W right with the win and he's going to be going on to his second term, then he can do whatever, whatever the hell he wants as soon as they say, you know, president has been uh, president Trump has been reelected and that's it. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be so cutthroat, but you know for a fact. It's funny because you see that you can see when he finds out. I saw this video where he finds mm -hmm. out about her death, right? That she died. And you could tell instantly he's like, oh, that's terrible. Finding out anybody dying is still terrible news. But at the same time, you also he see he's going, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? He's so excited mm -hmm. about it. He's excited because he's getting control. So that's what I think about that, Chucka. I appreciate yeah. that question, though. Go ahead, Jack. Well, the reason that they, they are, in general, people are saying that they should respect that wish is because when Obama nominated Merrick Garland uh, to go for the associate justice on the Supreme Court, 
after uh, Antonin uh, Scalia had passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they didn't take up that nomination because it was in the last, um, you know, in the last turn, like the last year uh, of him being president. And they said, oh, well, a Democratic president shouldn't nominate, you know, that shouldn't be filled by a Democratic president. They should wait till a new president's elected so that they can pick out who wants who's going to be on the Supreme Court. And so that's why Democrats are saying, hey, this happened during Obama. Yeah. And you guys didn't even take up the vote and you pushed it and pushed it until a new president was, was elected. And so now a new vacancy is here and it's during the last year of a first term president. So the same thing should happen. It should be waiting until you'd see what happens after election. Exactly. I just think that's the respectful thing to do. Now, anybody else could sit there and say, oh, you're being as SJW, you're just being super sent, whatever it might be. I just honestly think that, hey, if somebody's gone out of their way to dedicate their entire life, you know, to what they've done, to all the good things that they've done to the, for this country and for the, for the betterment of humankind in, here on this land, and they just passed, and that seat that they sat in is a very big seat to fill, and you're just going to just sweep, it's like sweeping her under the rug to me. I just feel like there needs to be a level of respect for someone who's dedicated their life to this country, mm-hmm. to the rights of, of the people of this country, whether they are like, even if this was, even if this was Biden, let's just say, and this was a Republican uh, member of the Supreme court. Right. And he really wants that seat to be filled by a Democrat. I feel like he could wait a few weeks to fill that seat. I feel like he, that would be the right thing to do. That's just me, though. Or that's just us. right? Yeah, you know, and playing fair and then there's playing politics. So uh, Republicans seem to like to play politics. Facts. They do. I mean, so, so do Democrats. But of course. I mean, you know, <laughs> isn't that how we that isn't that how we how we play? You know what I'm saying? Like we all do this stuff, you know, like they're all doing this. They're both they're both being, you know, little scallywags on either side. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. And it sucks, but it is the truth. I want to say uh, thank you, Chucka, for the $5 tip. We really appreciate it. He said, uh, we do have differing opinions politically, but I respect your appro- open approach to discussing po- uh, politics. Sorry. Much love, brother. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Seriously. Now, I just think that he should just wait, sit back, relax, wait for the elections to be done, and then do his thing. If if he is reelected. You know what I'm saying? If he is reelected, he can do whatever the hell he wants. That's fine. I'll sit back and go, Pff. well, he earned it. He won. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? After 15 recounts, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of recounts here in the near future. But hey, step back, chill. Let her, like, she, she hasn't even been buried yet. See what mm-hmm. I'm saying? She hasn't even been put in the ground yet. There hasn't even been a full ceremony for her death yet. And he's already trying to fill her seat already. I just think that's disrespectful. That's just me. That's just me. Yeah. Guess what the Simpsons said <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> what did they They say? called it. They showed, you know, RGB being pulled off to the side and being replaced by a female. And guess what female the Simpsons chose to replace RGB with? Um, let me think. Kellyanne Conway. No, go closer to the family. Ivanka Trump. Yes. Oh my God. That, that's what that's what Simpsons, the Simpsons it, see as a, they have uh, predicted, as they as people say, the Simpsons did it. So that's who they chose. You know, it, it's it's um, that's scary. That's scary. The thought mm-hmm. the thought of that would be absolutely terrifying. What in like and that's the other thing though. What what experience does that chick have? Well, she probably got her degree from online real quick last right. night. And <laughs> she she got it on uh, Phoenix. Uner- yeah, University of Phoenix law degree. <laughs> oh, I'm done. That that would kill me. If if that really what I'd be like, I'm dead. I'm dead. Just in the arms of an angel. I'm done. I'm done. If that happens, kill me twice. I'm done. Oh, that's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious, man. That's that's freaking hilarious. Um, 
Man, well, we got to jump into, obviously, there, there's some more stuff we could talk about. But one of the things is, okay, the Emmys were last night. A quarantined, locked down, locked up version of the Emmys happened last night, which was very interesting, actually. I thought it was, I thought it was good, you know, for what they did. They, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, blackface. <clears throat> sorry. Jimmy Kimmel, blackface. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Jimmy Kimmel uh, was on. Uh, hosting as he's done many many times before and I, you know honestly I do, really do think he's a pretty good host he, he does his job uh, he had a really good time just making a few jokes here and there in, in regards to quarantine and and sanitizing things and all that um, and the way that they approached things I thought was really cool like I, I liked how they they kind of put together the everybody was still able to be with their cast and, and crew you know, the producers and actors were all still able to be a part uh, in the same room together, celebrating or just waiting to hear if they won or lost uh, during the, the, the Emmys. So I, I really did like that quite a bit. Um, and, you know, and it was really cool, like Schitt's Creek, by the, for example, um, which was a, a sitcom, really funny show, actually, mm -hmm. uh, was killed it in the comedy section. They, they got a lot of uh, awards. Uh, last night in regards to for like best comedy best comp scripted comedy etc um which sucks because you know now that show is over they had their last season um and they ended the, the show is over but what a way to end on a on a good on a good mark or end on a good point you know what i mean um and so congratulations to them but then also on top of that um Zendaya, Zendaya uh, won for Best Actress in a drama, TV drama, and uh, she just made Euphoria. history for Euphoria. Yes, she just made history because she is the youngest. She is the youngest. Mm. Um, uh, she's the youngest person to ever win that for the uh, win for that particular category which is really, really fantastic. So I wanted to show you guys her acceptance speech because I thought it was pretty cool. Hold on one second. Let's check this out, Mike. We're busting a lot of moves here. Each of the women in our next category is an extraordinary talent. And this year, instead of being judged by uh, on their hairstyle or what they wear, the nominees for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series will be judged on what kind of living room furniture they have. Here they are. Love the fake and collapse. The Emmy goes to Zendaya Euphoria. to the TV Academy, um, to all the other incredible women in this category. I, I admire you all so much. This is, um, whoa, this is pretty crazy. I don't really cry. Whoa, okay, um, thank you HBO and A24 for all your support. Um, thank you to my family and my team who's all here. I'm really grateful to have all of you here. Um, to the incredible cast and crew of Euphoria, um, I'm so lucky to go to work with you every day and I'm inspired by everything you do. Um, and to Sam Levinson, um, I appreciate you so much, you're my family. I'm so grateful for Rue. I'm so grateful that you trusted me with your story. Um, and I, I hope I can continue to do you proud. Um, I know this feels like a really, really weird time to be celebrating. Um, 
But um, I just want to say that there is hope in, in the young people uh, out there. I know that our, our, our TV show doesn't always feel like a great example of that, but there is hope in the young people. And um, I just want to say to all my peers out there doing the work um, in the streets, I see you, I admire you, I thank you. And um, yeah, uh, thank you so, so much. Um, this is, whoa, okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know, here it is. Like, uh, I, I think what she said was really, really great. I think that she... It was uh, endearing, you know? It's really cool to see her just win. You know what I mean? I, uh, if you haven't seen Euphoria, you need to check it out. She does a really, really good job on that show. I think it was a, uh, one of those shows that's just been, uh, is kind of underappreciated. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those, uh, what, let's just say, um, a sleeper hit. Um, because I don't know how well it did on like, I don't know how well it did on HBO or whatnot, but I loved the show. I thought it was really, it's really, really well done. And her performance in that show is really fan-freaking-tastic. So I'm excited for her because it's nice to see like a Disney kid get out of that tr Disney kid train thing and, and not be messed up and actually find success and be a successful person. I just hope that she stays that way. You know what I mean? I hope that this trajectory takes her to a whole nother level. And I hope to see an Oscar in the near future for her. I think she's really really fantastic and she just made history y'all she just made emmy television history basically um which is really really big so I, I see a lot of good things coming for her so check out euphoria on hbo it's a really really good show oh and one more thing the soundtrack is fire that's all i'm gonna say the the soundtrack on that show is fire but anyway i'm excited for her. it's big news it's good yeah i have to go check it out i haven't watched any of it so. Yeah, not for kids. Definitely oh. a show not for kids. Okay. Definitely a show fine, not for kids. Fine, I won't watch it. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, check it out if you can, though. If you want to check it out, Jack, check it out. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got that free HBO Go when I got I switched over to AT&T. Yeah. And so it's on HBO, right? Yeah, HBO. Go yeah. check it out. There we go. Damn good show. But anyway, we got to go into a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. This is the Pascal Show. Oh, by the way, this is funny, but there is... Uh, some paintings that we need to talk about mm -hmm. in the next after this break so stick around f cuomo we'll explain in a little bit this is the pascal show bye hey, take off. miss feinberg i'd really appreciate it if you would close your legs do you find it distracting power respect but you see how he makes these S's in his body right here? That's where he's hanging on, and then he's moving forward with the locomotion of his ribs. That is classic Missouri rat snake right there. I mean, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab him before he uh, gets into a hole. Now these snakes are not biters. They won't bite as long as you don't squeeze them. If you just stop them like this, it'll freeze them. And then you just gently pull them back. And as long as you don't squeeze them, they won't bite. Yo, Mike, what's, what's up, man? Again? Good to see you, man. Yeah, so sugar fire. Yeah. Fully open, right? Yeah, we're pretty much open. Um, awesome. You can't sit inside yet. Monday, you can sit inside a little bit. We'll have 25% of the tables inside, and then we're letting it rip outside. So I know that there's a lot of people really concerned about uh, staying safe and yeah. all that. No, so what are you guys that. doing in regards to that? Well, um, we have extra people to clean and rub everything down all the time. Everybody inside is wearing masks. And we have those little stickers on the ground so everyone can stay six feet apart. Right on. The tables are all spaced out, inside and outside. Sugar fire open in full effect right now they're staying healthy they're staying clean go get you a rack of ribs sugar fire open right now Thanks. the fur and leather center providing the highest of fur and leather goods Oh, I can't make this interview boring because this no, man is boring. too exciting as a host. 
And I'm truly saying this, and if y'all can't do this, me and this man here is going to leave and go somewhere else where we can get some love. I want everyone in the building to say, I love Pascal on the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Wow. Homeowners and property managers, if you're looking for effective and humane ways to remove wild animals and deal with the damage that they have caused, we have good news for you. Introducing Wildlife Command Center, a professional nuisance wildlife management company specializing in providing animal removal for residential, industrial, and commercial clients. We are the only wildlife company that checks 70 different areas on a structure to determine the answers to the following questions. Exactly which animal are we dealing with? How is the animal getting inside the home? What kind of damage is the animal doing to the structure? Once we get the answers to all of these questions, we develop and write up an action plan to resolve the animal issue completely and provide a quote to implement that action plan. We perform a very in-depth 70-point wildlife inspection. From visually inspecting the highest point, the chimney, to physically crawling inside the attic space and looking for animals, chewed wires, fecal matter, chewed structural wood, we inspect everything. Our inspection process covers all of the following 70 points. Animal-proof chimney cap, roof ridge vents, roof to soffit junctions, dormer fascia, attic gable vents, gutter lines, fascia trim, garage door, utility penetrations, water, gas, electric, and cable, bathroom vents, attic roof ridge vents, attic electrical wiring junctions, boxes, and lighting, concrete decks, additions, wooden crawl spaces, basement, plumbing, penetrations, ceiling, floor, and wall. Wildlife Command Center's mission is to deliver the finest quality wildlife removal and pest control service that is safe for the environment. For more information, call us now. Hey, welcome, welcome back, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and sticking around and being a part of the conversation. If this is your first time checking out this show, please go crush that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. That would really mean a lot. We do this show Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And I also do a Monday, a, a, a night show at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I'll be on tonight at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Be sure to tune in and be a part of the conversation as well. And if you haven't done it yet as well, Hit that like button down below. Let us know that you're having a good time on this show today. Anyway, we got to jump into this next story, which I find uh, really interesting. Um, well, 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 uh, New York, New York is uh, speaking their minds recently. Um, just the other day, uh, some people went and wrote, painted a mural. That was dedicated specifically for Cuomo and de Blasio. And it read, F Cuomo and de Blasio mm -hmm. all over a Brooklyn street in the same style and in the same vein as the Black Lives Matter mural that's being painted on many, many streets all over the country. Anyway, uh, Jack's got the story. I'm going to throw it over to Jack. Let's hit it. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> for nearly 24 hours this weekend. Um, and that same all caps block long message, which literally took up a city block in New York, uh, put in yellow, uh, contained what they say is the rage of New York city saying F Cuomo and de Blasio. Um, yeah, the New York post was the first to report the shout out, uh, to them. Um, and, uh, it was created around 1 AM on Saturday during an annual block party that also served as a small business owner protest. 
Um, and a few party go goers got the idea to paint in huge letters uh, using yellow paint with rollers on North 15th. Um, and an un un unidentified attendee said Sunday, the party continued. Everyone took photos. It was a big hit. The crowds cheered. Even the cops chuckled. Wow. So um, the Department of Transportation covered the street art uh, in black around 10 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, they told the party goers it came from up top and they were told the sign said... Uh, F the police. Um, and uh, yeah. Wait, what? Uh, they, I guess the uh, Department of Transportation again? was told that it said F the police. Um, but you know, when they showed up to come and delete it, uh, but or to cover it up, and I guess it, that's not what it said. Mm. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, that's pretty interesting, though. I mean, you know, being at a block party and people are just, you know, making, making statements. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know what? Uh, I you know, Cuomo and Blasi have both been criticized um, for the economic fallout in New York and uh, how the coronavirus lockdowns have gone on. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of people out there with this sentiment. There's, I mean, understandable, understandable. Uh, you know, but what I find really funny is that the cops, I guess the cops really uh, took it seriously when it said F the police. Mm -hmm. And then they came down with the quickness. And then mm -hmm. suddenly... They're like, oh, it doesn't say that, but this is kind of funny, though. Still, we got to chuckle. And that's interesting how they were quick to get down there as soon as it said F the police. If it was F the police, not our people. We bleed blue. Not our people. But it wasn't that. It was F Cuomo and de Blasio. Now, here's the thing, though. Um, even uh, de Blasio just recently last week came out with a statement saying that he's going to be furloughing himself and a lot of people in his a lot of his staff as well i mean there's a lot of money not to be had right now because everything's all jacked up now what's really funny though too is how much people say that cuomo's been doing such a good job how much how much he is in regards to everything with the with the the pandemic and how he's conducted things but i guess people feel different I guess if people feel otherwise now. It's funny how quickly the pendulums swing onto the negative. How quickly it'll go on one side. Oh, he's doing so great. He's doing so many wonderful things for this country and or the for this for our state. Look at what he's doing for us. And then whoo, goes right back over to the negative. F Cuomo. Hmm. He ain't doing nothing. He's a dumbass. How dare he do that? Isn't that funny? Isn't that really funny? Yeah. Crazy, right? It's the back and forth. I mean, that's the, uh, you, know, you can't please everybody with what you do. I mean, <laughs> so. yes. No, no, no. You can't please everybody, obviously. But there was enough people to get around to paint that big ass mural because it's a, it's a big, it's a big mural. It's a, mm -hmm. It takes up a city block, y'all. And it's Brooklyn. So a city block is a city block in Brooklyn. Um, it takes up a whole, Full on city block in Brooklyn. Those people, and it was a bunch of people that got together to do that thing. So it was a premeditated, obviously it's premeditated, but it was a premeditated event for everyone to get their frustrations out and put in their thoughts <laughs> in one phrase. And it attacked and it goes after two people. Man, people are getting straight to the point nowadays. They're like, forget all this bull. We're going to say what we got to say. In just one phrase. Right. They're literally killing two birds with one stone. That's right. In that statement. <laughs> Bang. But here's the thing. I mean, yes, you're right, Jack. There's, there's no way that they're going to please everyone. Right? There's no way that they're going to fully please everyone. But at the same time, my question goes out to every, everybody out here that's watching. For those of y'all who are in New York, how do you think they truly are doing? If you were given the circumstances that they've been given, would you do the same? Would you proceed the same way? Would you go after the, these situations the same way? Or would you do it different? And how would you do it different? That's what I'd like to know. Because if people are going to have the, the audacity and have the time to go out to Brooklyn and paint a large ass middle finger to two people who are running their state and city 
Do you think that they that you they do you think that you could have done better? And if so, what would you do? Mm. Think about it. You're getting hit with this crazy thing. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know what it does. You, all you know at, at first is that it's killing people. So you do what you can to one keep the 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 country your your state and your city safe. But at the same time, try to find ways to get the country, the, the city in your state running back up again, get the economy moving again. Do you think that these guys really deserve the FU? Do they? No, I don't I don't know. They're getting an even bigger FU right now, too. Uh, and, and it's coming from the government uh, because then just uh, just a few hours ago, or let me see here. Yeah, uh, this morning at six, it dropped that uh, New York City, along with Port and Oregon and Seattle, Washington, were uh, the three cities labeled anarchist jurisdictions by the Justice what? Department. Um, and so they're targeted to lose federal money for Whoa. failing to control protesters and defunding cops. Wait a second. Wait a second. So so New York. Mm -hmm. New York City. Okay, so there's New York Port City. Portland and Portland Seattle. And Seattle. Okay, so I was going to say there's, there's more than just New York City with these protests mm -hmm. that are going on. Um, yeah. So Barr said, uh, when state and local leaders impede their own law enforcement officers and agencies from doing their job, it endangers innocent citizens who deserve to be protected, including those who are trying to peacefully assemble and protest. Uh, Barr said that, and that statement is supposed to be set to uh, release today. Um, we cannot allow federal tax dollars to be wasted when the safety of the citizens, citizens, citizenry, citizenry, never even heard that word before, <laughs> hangs in the balance. One. Uh, it is my hope that the cities identified by the Department of Justice today will reverse course and become serious about performing the basic function of government and start protecting their own citizens. Man. So, man that's why people are giving them a big F you. They feel yeah. like they're not uh, holding up their, their side of the, the deal. Their end of the deal. For real. Yeah. For real, for real. You know, I don't know, man. You know, it to me, to me, it seems like they're doing the best that they can with the cards that they're dealt. Um, but at the same time, I guess some people just disagree. Uh, pff, man, that's insane. That's insane. Yeah. See, like I can understand like a, to a certain extent, I understand, I can understand Portland, like a right. place like Portland, Portland's insane right now. You know, I can understand Seattle a little bit, but New York city, well, I got to remember who's who's gonna be filing all these uh, oh. lawsuits against Trump. Uh, facts, <laughs> facts there too. Damn, that's insane, man. Yeah, there they you, said in there July the number of shootings in New York City skyrocketed 177 percent over the same period last year, and there was a 59 percent rise in murders. In August, city shootings soared 165 percent, while murders jumped about 50 percent. That's because uh, when people are not working, they are needing money. They, you know, everyone's kind of on edge. People are dying. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, uh, people are outlashing. But Man. I guess we'll see what happens here in the next, you know, couple months. Right. Uh, whether or not actual, because like New York City gets about seven, or New York, I guess in general, gets about $7 billion in federal aid every year so if they cut that you know i don't know what exactly they're taking the money from right um yeah hmm. it says while violence has surged arrests have plummeted in a 28-day period during the months of june and, new and july new york city arrests were down 62 percent from the same period in 2019 and so uh, and it said, amidst the rising violence, Mayor Bill de Blasio and the New York City Council agreed to cut $1 billion from the New York Police Department budget, including by canceling the hiring of 1,163 officers. Uh, and they said Portland made the anarchist list over it. It's more than 100 consecutive nights of protests and because Mayor Ted Wheeler expressly rejected federal help in a letter to Trump. So, you know... Shoot. That's that. That's fun when when the federal government's you know fighting with individual states. Yeah, it's uh, 
Holy cow. That's nuts. Like, like, can you imagine living in one of those cities and having your city labeled as an anarchist city? That's crazy, right? Like, it's uh, that's like a, a few ruining it for the whole, right? Like, because <laughs> how many people live Facts. in New York City? I don't know what the current population is. Let's see here. Because it was pretty packed when you were living up there, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was packed. Oh, but, oh, 8.399 million in yeah, 2018. And, and it's probably, and that was 2019. Uh, 2018. 2018. Uh, yeah. You know, people are leaving the state. People are leaving, uh, sorry, people are leaving the city even more now because there's nothing to be had. Everybody's basically, a lot of people are going back to their hometowns now because there's nothing to be had. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with California, the state of California. There are more people moving out than there are people moving in now. Uh, people are trying to get away from the the craziness that's going on. You know, um, it's uh, it's crazy. I'm, I, I was reading some of these comments. I'm sorry. Uh, in, in one of them, uh, Michelle. Good morning, Michelle. She said um, he actually didn't do a great job, but his brother was main was his main media interviewer. Um, it is hard to make a case that you care uh, when you are on TV making nose jokes while people are dying. Mm. So I, I see what you're saying, you know. Um, and then there was another person that said something. Hold on. I'm trying to find where it was. I lost it. Dang. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, I, so I like it. Mr. Super's uh, Warriors come out to play. <laughs> you remember that movie? Yes, of course. Yes, <laughs> Warriors. Come on now. Um, uh, where is... Uh, I just lost it. Saying something about Cuomo um, filling up nursing homes with COVID pa- patients. I, I, I don't have it anymore. I lost it. Um, Let's see. There it is. Tanny Vane said, supposedly Cuomo filled up old folk homes um, with COVID patients. And if that's true, that's insane. But I can see where he would sit there and go, well, we have no other places to go. We have no other places to facilitate these uh, these patients. Maybe that's what what the option was. But at the same time, like here it is. You're 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 given you're given nothing. You know, it's like you, you got to. You got to dig a hole and you're, you're given a fork. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, good luck. You got to dig a six foot hole. And, you know, you're given a plastic fork, a spork. You know what I'm saying? Good luck. And that's kind of what it feels like, you know, like what they've been dealt. You know, the hand that they were dealt sucks. The hand that everybody was dealt sucks. It's all terrible. It's a nightmare out there. You know what I'm saying? It's like the yeah. only thing we can do is is deal with it the best way we can. Now, of course, now as things start to settle and things start to become back to some sort of normalcy, kind of maybe I don't know. Um, people are now having time to to look back and go, "Oh, they didn't do a good job." But then it's like, well, what what would you have done? What would have you done if you were in that situation? You know. <laughs> it's uh you know everyone's got a tough you know political life to live yeah you know you go into that you go into that world and you know everyone's going to be questioning everything that you do all the time especially with social media and stuff now yeah like any you know any joke you make anything you do like is going to be emphasized and you know you could have a, a wonderful message that you want to get across and you say one one thing that's that's funny or weird or wrong, that's what they focus on. And so, you know, I don't know what, you know, what could have been done differently. And because it's not just like none, none of it's an easy, you know, decision to make for anything when you're running in politics. Like you got to really look where all the where all your money's coming from. Who, who's who's trying to lobby you the hardest? And then you go that route. So. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel for those cities, you know, I feel for those cities. I mean, yes, of course, all of us want us to want, you know, these cities to just nip things in the bud and figure things out and get it all straightened out. But there's a lot of angry people out here that are have been. Are dealing with setbacks, are dealing with just normal everyday crap 
that they shouldn't have to deal with anymore. Like they, the people who sit there and go, oh, you know, the, during the t- during the time before COVID happened, that are sitting there going, we don't need we don't need for nothing now. We're good, you know. Money's coming in, the things are rolling well. We're we're able to go and do our job. We're able to solidify whatever we need to do. And now, like, then COVID happens, and then all of a sudden, there's a lot of people who are fu- furloughed, or there's a lot of people that are on unpl- are, are on unemployment. A lot of that unemployment is now dead now. Like, you can't even, you know, as far as like being able to go and uh, uh, reapply. Uh, some places, sometimes they're, they're you're having a hard time getting like reapplied for unemployment because they sit there and say, "Well, you're not physically going and getting a job. You're not physically looking for a job. There's nothing to be had in some of these cities, you know, that's still locked down." You know, hence the reason why there are people who are leaving. But I understand that the people who are sticking around going, hey, you know, things will get better. Things will get better. Things will get better are angry as hell. I understand that they're Mm -hmm. angry as hell, you know, but the protests, the the craziness, the looting, the rioting, the the arson, the vandalism, all the stuff that's going on in the streets is not helping anything at all. It's not helping those cities look good, (laughs) period. You know, how many days has it been with um with Portland? I mean, think about it. It's been like I think it's well up. Like, is it a hundred days in Portland? The riots and the and the mm-hmm. protests. I think it's well over a hundred days. Hundred days, y'all. Hundred, and nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. People are still out there. I, I feel like people are still out there. I just, I just, I don't know. They, they, you know, if, if, and I think this is the thing is with it, too. Like, I think that if there was if the economy was turned back on, if we were able to do what we usually do. That I don't think there would be as many protests in the streets. That's what I honestly think. Yes, there's still be. Yes, of course, there's still be injustices that are going on. There's still be vi- videos that are going virus virus going viral out there. You know what I'm saying? There's still be those things for sure. There's still be protest, but they wouldn't be as much. I, that's at least what I think. If people are actually working and they're they're busy doing their jobs and paying their bills and living their life the best that they can, you know, collecting that money and securing them bags, then I don't think that there would be as much craziness in the streets. There still would be because there's still injustices that need to be talked about. That, that we still need to address a lot of the racial injustice that go, goes on in this country. But I don't think it would be as prominent. I don't think it would be as much. Because people would be out there securing the bags. If half the city is furloughed, furloughed, a.k.a. unemployed, and they have nothing else to do because there's no jobs to be had, they're going to be out in the streets talking about it. It's more than just someone getting shot in the back seven times. It is that too. But it's even more than that now. That's what I think. You know? Hmm. Man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm real, hoping quick, over the next... Real quick, can I say this real quick? Hold on. Mm-hmm. Hold that thought. This is That's crazy, Mr. Super. I just read something that, that he just said, and I think that's really nuts. He just said, he just said, we have perfect credit and didn't even get a loan, let alone a grant. Mm-hmm. Bruh. But see, see, but see, look, that's, that's the reality of it all. You can have that A1 credit, and they're still saying no. Nah. And it's like, well, how am I supposed to survive? How am I supposed to get through? What were you saying, Jack? I'm sorry. That's insane, uh, though, man. I was say, wait till you know, wait till election time and see see what what goes on because you know people that have been told one thing's going to happen or they're hoping for other stuff and then like you know telling them to be, stay home you can't work you can't open your business you can't do this and oh we're gonna give you give you somebody to help you out oh well maybe we're not oh we're gonna just argue about it because things aren't exactly what we want them to be and so we're gonna go back and forth and now it seems like they're playing politics with people's lives yep and you know it's um it's unfortunate you know it's gonna be uh, i don't know probably a, a historic election 
is what it was going to happen. Um, especially, you know, the position gets filled. Um, there's going to be a lot of people on the Democratic side that are really upset. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people on the Republican side that, you know, are wanting to help keep things in power and in place. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of just angry people that are, are wanting to go out and make changes. You know, excuse me, sneezing. Um, the thing is, is like, you know, as much as I want to, this, oh boy, sorry. There's so much to say. There's so much I have in my head that's just going, brrr, like, there's so much to say uh, with all of this. And, um, And the thing is, what sucks is that there is no there is no uh, solid solution. There is no perfect solid solution with this. And that's what's so frustrating about it. You know, as much as I want to sit, sit here and go, oh, all you, well, everybody, all you have to do is carry the one and then you get the sum of blah, blah, blah. Like, no, no, no. It's, it's really not that simple. And as much as we are all sitting here, literally, like we are all sitting here going, well, if they get the vaccine, this is over. The vaccine, get the vaccine, the vaccine. Once the vaccine's here, it's over. Once we get the vaccine, we can go back to regular life. Once the vaccine's here, we can go back to regular life. I don't know if that's entirely true, my brother and sisters. I think there's some some businesses that are closed down that will never open back up. Facts. No, no, no. There's businesses that are done, bruh. Figgity facts. Done, done, yeah. done, done, done. Even in my city, even in our city, sorry, even in our city, you drive down some of the most popular areas that used to be like jumping and popping and going crazy. Lots of those places are dead. Shut down, closed for business indefinitely because of everything that's going on. And even so, there's even more spikes going on in the state of Missouri right now uh, than ever before. Uh, Washington, Missouri is going to be uh, reissuing some new guidelines, some new COVID guidelines, because they had a large spike over this past weekend, over this past week. So they're going to try to see if they can flatten the curve. A lot of states are going to be doing that until there is a surefire vaccine out there that's going to eradicate this outbreak, the, the, the spikes, if you will. But, man, I mean, it, it's it's so frustrating because what are you going to do? And, of course, it's really easy for us to blame the powers that be. It's really easy to blame them. I'm not sitting here saying that we shouldn't feel some type of way. We definitely should. Shoot, man. We do this show from our homes. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's been great that we've been able to do it like this, but on some real stuff. We used to be in a studio. We used to be in a space. We used to have a place that we would leave our homes and do our show there. You know what I'm saying? Go now Go to work. We would, work. we would literally go to work and do work. Now we don't have that. And don't get me wrong. We're blessed to be able to do still to do this. But at the same time. Shoot, I, bless, I, 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 I thank my lucky stars that I'm still able to do this show that i'm not sitting here going oh financially i can't run the show anymore thankful as hell that i can do this here this way but i miss being able to go to certain places and promote local other local businesses and all that this is terrible you know it's a frustrating time and i understand everybody's frustrated but i'm not immediately going and blaming my mayor or my the governor. I'm I'm not, I, I because I'm sitting there going well. If if the cards were dealt, if I had the same cards dealt to me, and I was running this country, or this state, or city, whatever, what would I do? It's like I have no freaking earthly clue. If I just let things keep going, there'd be more outbreaks. People would be more sick. People would be dying. And guess what? They would still blame you. <laughs> they would still blame you, even though you said, hey, we're keeping the we need to get the economy running. We need to keep the get get things moving. You'd still be a jerk. You'd still be the one to blame. Right. That's where the, damned, damned if you do, if you damned, do damned, damned, damned if you don't. If you, don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, what do you do? What do you do? And uh, 
it's 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 terrible it's terrible it's terrible so like when you see a mural like that painted on the ground it says f cuomo it's like and de blasio it's like man that that is the seat that they took that is the you know heavy is the head that li- that lies the crown um you know and i get that but at the same time damn bro like <laughs> what, what are you gonna do what are you gonna do go to mars go to mars facts <laughs> or go to venus because apparently yeah venus apparently might have life on mars there i mean sorry life might on. have li- life on <laughs> venus it's weird to say Ma- uh, venus when i'm used to saying life on mars um yeah. but there might be life on venus of all places hey maybe we need to go hey. over there call it a day i'm telling you we we've already dis- we have been we've ran through earth hmm. like it ain't nothing you know what i mean hmm. it's time to get that yellow submarine man just go underwater yellow submarine <laughs> so now we're the beatles now we're the Beatles. Yeah. okay right. okay ringo thank you <laughs> you know he wrote that song you know that right i do now now, now you now you do. He's, yeah. See his amazing uh, pen, his work with the with the lyrics. Yeah, that's why he was a drummer. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. It's a kid's song if you really listen to it. It's like dude, a, they made a, a entire song. show called the Beat Bugs, and it's all about Beatles songs that they like turned into a shows. Yeah, and like some of these songs that they they wrote, man, are just out there yeah because he because was they because they were lsd out there they were high <laughs> man they were high as hell i'm out my mind like lsd like just gone <laughs> just gone but the thing is is people loved them yeah. people love that music which is still mind-blowing to me now that's a completely different conversation here anyway moving <laughs> on yes we do need to get into something like submerge ourselves but at the same time if we were to do that i don't know if i want to i don't want to do sea sea quest up in this piece deep cut by the way i don't want to do sea quest you know what i'm saying that, that that that's creepy we don't know what's in the water either you know what i'm saying we don't know what's fully truly in the water we aliens. just don't know. Yes, there's aliens, man. Speaking of aliens, you got a little bit of a story about aliens, right? Let's go into that story about the aliens, bruh. You said uh, somebody found a robot or something? What? Yeah, so there is a uh, UFOologist, whatever you want to call him, um, that are out, he's out there and he's been watching. Like, I guess You can plug in the coordinates for Area 51 into Google Maps and see like aerial photography of it, right? Uh, which I'm surprised it's still it's not like blocked airspace to be able to do so. Um, but he has been uh, watching and he's like, I've gone through different images and stuff. And I see what looks like to be like a 62 foot like robot that when I go back, there's it's in different positions. It's been put onto its side. Uh, and so wait, I'm sorry. They say that there's like another smaller one next to it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Hold up. Repeat that all over again. I want to make sure I process that properly. Say that one more uh, time. Okay. Where was so this found? A what? U- a UFO hunter or a UFO allergist or okay. you know, uh, he claims that a, a giant alien robot is being built in Area 51. So uh, he's saying that, you know, aliens have touched down, our government's been teaming up with them to rule us all. Uh, but this guy Scott C. Waring, um, he's a self described expert in the field of UFOlogy. UFO out. UFO Luigi, mm-hmm. uh, whatever U- U- it needs to be on there. UF foolery, uh, UF foolery. <laughs> yes. Uh, he that he away, he says is a roughly 52 foot tall structure on the premises of Area 51, and appears almost human like and possibly alien made. Can we? Do you? Do we have a photo? Yeah, I can. I'll pull this photo up here, please. And uh, Jennifer just said, uh, Jennifer on Facebook. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you so much for the comment. Oh, she lives. She says I live close. To Area 51. So Jennifer on on Facebook, Jennifer Bishop, thank you for the comment. Please let us know. Have you seen, have you been hearing this kind of story buzzing around near you? Because if you live near Area 51, you got to know a little bit of some, some. So how at your boy? How at your boys? Let let us know because I'd love to know what's going on here. Yeah, go on. 
Jack. I'm sorry. Just Let's see here. It's, uh, say yeah, I'm trying to get this thing to boot up here to load it up. But I mean, from the from the aerial imagery, it looks like you know it's either shadows of different things that are standing, right? Or it looks like it's a human formed type of thing, uh, like so a robot. If I, can, if I can put this. I mean, like a like like a like a robot. Like it's. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so he's and, so this person's yeah. thinking that is being created. What are they doing? Like freaking transformers up in this piece? Like what are they? Are they doing like a Power Rangers kind of thing? Is this like a, a Kygo or a Jaeger? I'm sorry. Is this like a Jaeger? Like a like that movie? I forgot the name of the movie now, but uh, Pacific Rim. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just operated. You get you're inside of it, and you can operate it, kind of thing. Like, see what I'm saying? There's a lot yeah. now. A lot of questions pop up, especially given the fact that we don't know if it's even real. Right. Like you know, we don't know this this ufoolery, ufologist is um full of crap. Yeah, we'll see. You got to love the guys uh, who sit there. Here's, you got to love the guys who be able to pull up. But you got to love the guys who sit there and say, "Oh, you know, this thing this is real and blah 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 blah," you know what I'm saying? And then they're crazy. Mm. They're absolutely nuts. Like I would love to see a very very uh uh straightforward guy who's just telling the truth. Whoa. Here, uh, move move your head out the way, mm. real quick. So you're talking about, hold on. So you're talking about this right here. Hold on a second. I'm not seeing the updated. Yeah, it's go. interesting. Okay. It's that thing that looks like a yeah, like a human body. Yeah, that's hilarious. But see, here here it is though. The photo is trash. The photo is trash. The Let's photo is images. trash. Huh? Mm-hmm. It's like, Google Images, you know what? What can you expect? That's Google Images. You found that on Google's Google Images. He did. I mm. did. No, but see, here's the thing, though. This is when I'd want to see Google Images, like an actual Google image of that. You don't think that That's, they would have like photoshopped that or or been around? Like oh, the government runs everything pretty much. So you think that they they man? That's stupid. I'm sorry. That's hilarious. It, I'm gonna it, put it, the coordinates for Area 51. That's hilarious. In the chat. And everyone can go look up on Google Earth and let me know what you see. Yes. Do that. Because. That's hilarious. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of, uh, there's a whole bunch of people talking about it. Of course. Uh, you know. And they're all wearing tinfoil hats. You know, and, and it's funny because like, I kind of wavered now because I'm like, oh yeah, didn't we admit, did the government admit that they saw aliens? And then there's UFOs. <laughs> like, so it's like, uh, yeah, I don't want to like go down this rabbit hole, but like maybe it is 2020. Uh, anything's possible. Anything is bloody possible. <laughs> Anything. But at the same time, like, hmm, hmm. Uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of people who are sitting there pulling up this thing. UFO, fi- UFO sighting 50 foot alien robot. Let's see satellite imagery. I'm pulling it up here on on Google Maps myself. What if it's what if it's a shadow of a dude? Oh yeah, I see. I see it. What if I it's see a, it. what if it's a what if it's a, a image of a dude skydiving? What if it's like a skydiving? You know what I'm saying? And this dude just happens to be caught. It almost looks like like you know if you if you move out the way really quick, you're good right there. Perfect. It almost looks like the dude's holding like a sphere, like a um, like a um, not a sphere, um. A spear, sorry. Like he's holding a spear or like a rifle or something like that. I mean, it just seems too. It just seems t- too good to be true. Yeah. But like I said, I, here it is. I want to see more proof than just a sky shot of something. You see what I'm saying? Like right. you know, and that's what's so frustrating. That that's what fr- frustrates me more than anything in the world about UFO sightings in general yeah. is that they're always fake. Like they're always foggy or whole, heavily digital or all right. that crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Like the other the other day we did a video. Um, I showed a video of uh, ghosts in Gettysburg's field, and yeah. it's all digital, like heavily digital and like not perfect. It's not clean. Like ain't nobody going out there rolling out there with like a high quality camera actually capturing these apparitions walking across Gettysburg. You know what I mean? Right. Like. 
I wanted to see that, not just some weird pixelated weird stuff that's just dancing around. That could be anything, right? Right. So when it comes to something like this, you know what I mean? Like this thing that's right next to your head, that looks like something like it looks like a toy soldier. Like it looks like a toy. Yeah. Then and also I it's mean, like why would they build that in out there for the in in, in clear sight in in broad daylight? That doesn't make any sense because from my understanding underneath area 51 they got like huge huge areas that are, are built underneath area 51 where you, they can literally put planes next to each other wing to wing that's how wide like a 737 plane two planes could be underneath you know what i mean they have areas that big you know they have spaces that big in area 51 so they can't build that there they got to build this out in broad daylight you know it's area 51 keep the public on their feet and you know and i think it's the same photo like the same camera took this as as the bigfoot sightings um uh, you know it's never perfectly clear super pixelated and you're like is it is it not maybe that's bigfoot the, it might be it's sasquatch that's what it is it's <laughs> full-on sasquatch oh my god i see now now this is something i would i need to i would have to see this with my own two eyes but that's just me like i said i'm tired of pixelated videos I'm tired of, you know, like they, they said that they saw a UFO uh, out there. It was like last week as well. And they go, no, it's a, it was a it was a Goodyear blimp. Didn't look like a Goodyear blimp, in my personal opinion. I'm going to I'm going to be straight funky so much that people were out there point like videotaping it. They were taping it. They're going, what the heck is this? So maybe it was like some futuristic dope. um, Like some dope futuristic. Goodyear blimp that, that that they're test driving or something like that. I don't know. But to me, that's some weird stuff. Hmm. Like a toy soldier. It looks like a G.I. Joe. It looks like a G.I. Yeah. Joe. Just just laying. It's like a silhouette. Um, hmm. Am I am I in trouble now for typing in the coordinates for Area 51 into my computer? I hope to God you're not. <laughs> Just thought about that. I've been in. Like, I've, oh. been, I've been in yeah. too many issues lately in the past two weeks with just putting up videos and stuff talking about ish. So ugh, you know, you never know now. Now there's gonna be people knocking on my door, going, "We're the special something something something. <laughs> We're Shield. You know what I mean? This is Shield. Anyway, yeah, that is nuts." But here's the here's the other thing though too. Just a quick random like sidestep, but it still has to do with all this stuff. Wouldn't you think Trump would have said something by now about the truth about a whole bunch of stuff? Like, wouldn't he expose Earth thing because he's just that guy? Well, he doesn't want to cause a panic. Remember, right? So he's going to downplay things. But that's that has that's neither here nor there. Like, that's not going to cause a panic if there's UFOs randomly showing up out of nowhere right now like literally um i got videos that have been sent to me <laughs> oh my god that's some stuff that i'm like what is this like the like over the past few like over the last week i got a whole bunch of emails and a bunch of messages through facebook of actual TikTok videos of people showing like multiple lights um, in the sky, just just mm -hmm. moving around. These aren't firecrackers. These these are definitely not like a weather balloon or anything crazy like that. Actual things that are flying around in formation and then going away. And, and man, it's crazy. And no one's talking about this stuff, man. Hmm. They're being silenced by the government. You're saying? I don't know if it's being silenced. <laughs> but these are videos that have been sent. Man, I'm about to show it to you. F it. We about to see this right now live on the damn show. Just give me a minute, y'all. Give me a minute. <laughs> so in St. Louis, when they were yeah. building out 40 back in the day, yeah, and they, there was multiple like people that had reported seeing like UFOs flying over St. Louis back in the day. 
like during before all the lights and everything else and expansion out west in the west county and area and stuff like that all happened like multiple reports you can look it up it's like in the news from back in the day no i, I mean see like but i believe it i'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that i don't believe that um ufos exist they most definitely exist i believe that they they exist bruh i'm not like to me there's like i said before there's no way that we could have all this crazy stuff pop up all the time for us not to sit there and go it, it's real you know what i'm saying there's just no way that we could just go eh, maybe maybe they're real maybe that no like if we see over and over and over again all this stuff there's got to be some truths to it you know and that's just one of those things. That's one of them that I'm just like, this has got to be 100% real. I, mm. But the, what sucks is, is I want to see things that are real. Like I want to see, I want to see the, I want to see it in, in the best quality it could ever be. Mm -hmm. And so that there is no room for BS. There is no Correct. room for Oh no no! What really is? What really happened is it's this and this this. this. No, I want to. See, I want the truth, and you cannot even bow around it. You know, you can't. You you can't even dodge and fake the fuck that this is real. Right. All the pixelated crap pisses me off, because then everyone can make up anything. Oh, it's a tin can. Somebody threw it in the air and just happened to get stuck in the. You know what I'm saying? Stupid stuff like that. It's like, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me turn you down real quick. I need to pull up this video. Come on. There we are. All right. This is crazy, too. Um, the fact that this is even a real video is mind blowing. And there's no way you can fake this because there's other people that are outside looking at this and reacting to this. Okay. This is a UFO sighting, UFOs sighting, that was captured on TikTok. This is one of many that I already have. Take a look at this. Do you see that? It's still pulling up for me. No worries. I got a little delay from when you're doing things to when it's actually going on. Right. Oh, there we go. Oh. But look at that. And that's just... Normal? Isn't that the Elon Musk launch of his satellites? Yes, a thousand satellites that are going back down into the Earth. Oh. Uh, where? What city was this in? I don't in Texas? even. Texas. Yeah, is Texas. That? This is Texas. Look at that. Do you see what I'm saying? There's no way like and the thing is, is like, of course, there are people who are going to sit there and say that that's not real. That the, and of course, we can all sit here and, and find ex find ways to, you know, excuses, you know, to say this, that and the third. But let me show you guys another one real quick. Hold on. This one is weird. Hold on. I got to turn you down one more time. This one's crazy, too. Take a look at this one. Just look at that. See this? Well, watch these. Watch them real quick. Watch. More start showing up. But look at this. These aren't, these aren't like little meteors or little, like, you know rocks falling into the sky look at this stuff wait for it see now they're curving and stuff and that's normal Now, that's kind of crazy, right? Hmm. Now, I mean, of course you could sit there and say, oh, that they're, they, they could be anything. I mean, they literally could. I mean, you know, you, you could find excuses for those. Sure. 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 
you know, like the like the one that we saw before. Oh, here's another one. I'll show this one more. This other one. One more of these bad boys. Hold up. But you're right, uh, Chucka. You know what I mean? It's like uh, you need. That's why I keep saying like uh, Chucka said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. That is the basis of uh, scientific explore exploration. And I agree. You know what I mean? Like, I do agree with that. But there's no way that this, that these, I don't know, spa like W on um, on uh, uh, Periscope just said that uh, uh, SpaceX probably. But why would they be coming back down? Wouldn't they be going up? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like wouldn't they have uh, said something? Wouldn't they have said something to let people know, hey, uh, this is really going on. This is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like they would have said something because everybody out here is like doing this. Now, this is in Boston. This is in Boston. Take a look. Oh, no cap. What the fuck? What? See all that? See all that? Bro. Dog, do you see this shit? Look at that. Do you see that? Oh, no. Cap. By the way. The fuck? By the way. What? I'm going to play one more time Bro, so you can see what? it. But look at all the other ones that just start popping up. This ain't fireworks. You know what I'm saying, y'all? That ain't fireworks. Look at that. Look at all that. Like, what is that? What is that? What is that? Just saying. So, as much as we want to sit here and say, oh, yeah, you know, aliens ain't real. Like, I'm just saying, that is some weird, questionable stuff right there. Those are all uh, extremely questionable. That's all. Do you remember in uh, the Truman Show and the panels and the sky stopped working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Well, it's time to change the, the batteries, you know? <laughs> and if I don't see you, good, uh, good morning, good evening, and good night. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's real. Yeah. I, I see Tanya Vane's uh, comment here. I also wouldn't be surprised if we were having an increase in defensive air operations over the U.S. to prepare for potential Chinese war to kick off in Taiwan, which is very interesting because just uh, one of the things that was announced was that um, China's propagandist you know, videos got dropped. Um, and there's two different ones. One showing what would happen if, um, if the the U.S. were, you know, to get more involved in Taiwan, and they it ends up having a, a full thing showing that like um, a video basically where they were like, oh, here's our air force and it's here to protect the motherland, and it shows them basically dropping bombs onto uh, the air force base in Guam, um, and they, oh, wow. it was unnamed, but like the full layout's the same as the one that we have, um, and it's basically saying that the long range attack of the air force of, the, of China has been is enough to go out to Guam. If, you know, if things were to, to rise in the, into the seas and then they said, Oh, and what were to happen if there was a ground war and they're showing like, you know, troops going through the, um, through the woods and ballistic attacks and stuff going on. So, um, no, so he, it's fun. I mean, and, and, but here's the thing though, I, I understand that. And I understand that there's going to be a lot of testings and a lot of things that they're going to do that is going to be, um, let's just say, uh, top secret that they're not going to say and expose to the public because they don't want other people like the, you know, the powers that be in other countries to know what's going on. But then when you see stuff like that popping up in random areas of the country, almost within days of each other, it makes you wonder what the f is going on. It makes you wonder what the f is going on. That's all, all I'm right. saying. Yeah. And if that is true, that, then fine, then fine. But if it is like testings, top secret testings, then 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 fine. But it is weird when you 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 think people aren't looking up, but people are looking up <laughs> even more now. You know, given the fact that there has been truths that that have been put put out there in regards to UFOs and you know uh, unidentified uh, aerial vehicles. You know what I mean? Right. Um, not only just like UFOs, like literal aliens, you know, from other planets type thing, but like actual, you know, other people could be other uh, countries could be uh, testing out aircraft. 
right? And just flying over America. But I, I feel like I thought America, I, I thought our our we have our eye on the sky all the time. So if there was some random unidentified flying vehicle, um, just blasting through over America, wouldn't the Air Force go with, hey, what is that? Yeah, they you know already what I'm know about it. Like they would have, they would have been knowing about that. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it's just it's very interesting. But I would love to see some proof. Like I would, I, I actually want to see the proof. Don't get me wrong; I don't want to see it first, face first. You know what I'm saying? That would be kind of t- terrifying. Real talk. Unless they were like, we come in peace. Cool. You know, give me some cool powers. Like I can levitate and be superman or something like that that'd be kind of cool but other than that i don't want to die <laughs> just because i saw proof that uh aliens exist firsthand nah i'm good i'm good on that i'm good i'm good on that you know seriously good well you know it's that's one thing like you just can't trust any of our governments no nah. <laughs> Can't trust not a damn thing, bro. It's too much secrecy. Nah, it's too much. But here's the thing: Would you want a? Com- okay, let me let me just ask you guys honestly, and this goes out to y'all, y'all. While before we uh, wrap up the show, would you want a government that is completely real and candid with you about everything, every little thing that's going on in the world, or would you rather have a government that just keeps things under wraps? Until like the truth needs to be put out. Definitely comment below for that one. Would you rather have a government that just keeps it real and says, yes, there are aliens. And we all going to die. Or they're sitting there going, no, there's no aliens. Y'all are crazy. But they got aliens like locked up in Area 51 building a gigantic human robot outside in, in the desert for, for the world to see. Or. Would you want them just lying like a mug? Just lying like a mug. Personally, I would want to know. But yeah, yeah, me too. I'd rather just I'd rather them just keep it straight funky with me. You know, here's who killed JFK and re- like for real. Here's the killer. Killers. Here's this. Here's that. Aliens do exist. So y'all need to shut the hell up with all that stuff. 90 percent of the footage that you see out there is fake, but the other 10 are real. With the UFO, UFO fighting sightings, you know what I'm saying? Yes, we are building a gigantic robot to eradicate whatever. You know, we're we're trying a Pacific Rim type of approach approach to things. Mm-hmm. You know, we are in cahoots with aliens. That's how the iPhone was was created. You know, wasn't Steve Jobs? It was an alien. He brought it with he brought it with him. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's yeah. that's what I wanted. That's what I'd like to know. It's crazy. Uh, thank you, Blake. Yeah, they're called UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenons. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It makes uh, you feel better. <laughs> Joseph said, I want to know everything like the Maury show. Yes. Tess came back, found out that is a lie. You know what I'm saying? You are not the father. You see what I'm saying? That's what I want to have, too. Just Maury Povich just sitting there going, we did a test on that. It says that you are not the father you know what i'm saying then we're all doing cartwheels and stuff i told you i told you you know what i mean yeah uh uh, chucka said uh if we can't handle the truth about basic things how can we handle deep secrets i support managing state secrets interesting that is interesting me I, i feel like okay you you got a point but I think it's because of being in a world where we have been just where we have not been told the absolute truth. You know, for a fact that there have been, of course, truths that are still lying out there. The truth is still out there for sure. And I'm not trying to sound like some X-Files type BS. I'm just saying in regards to just everything that goes on in this country, everything that goes on in this world. Uh, but the only reason why it's scandalous is because it is exposed. It's when the the truth is finally exposed. If they went 
uh, if they went head on on this thing, then yes, at first everybody would be like, aliens are real. And then they'd be too busy worrying about how they're going to buy a bag of, you know, Doritos the next day. It'd be like a thing for like a few days. It'd be trending news and it'd be a top news story all over the, the you know, MSMs, the mainstream medias. And then we'd be, and then they'd go focus on something else after a week, after a week of it. They'd be like, if, especially right now, they'd be talking about COVID. They'd be like, oh, my God, aliens are real. And then they'd be talking about it and they'd be having interviews with people who have had their close counter of the 15,000th time kind or something like that. And then it would die. You know what I'm saying? Oprah, Win if Win Oprah Winfrey would have a, a talk. Uh, 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 Dr. Phil would have an open panel discussion with people who have had uh, close encounters of the third kind. And then it would die. Because then next thing you know, they'd be like, the COVID is, is spiked up again. What are we going to do about these schools and all the kids that are getting sick? I mean, it would be a thing for two seconds and they'd move on. If we were, if the government were going after things head on, like just truth out there, exposed, here it is. We're going to tell it to you guys so you guys don't freak out. It's only when people, the only time that people freak out is when the truth is withheld. And then it gets exposed. Next thing you know, it's all over tabloids and it's all over the, you know what I mean? He said that there was no such thing as aliens. Now we find out 16 years later, he was lying. We're going to talk to the guy who's, who broke out the, the lie. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden it's a big deal. You know what I'm saying? You head on, you, get, you hit it head on, be done. Right. Say right then when it's fresh. Yes, I cheated. I'm sorry. 15 years later, baby, I cheated. Man, you will not have your sex organ anymore the next morning. 15 years? You've been holding that from me for sick 15 years? Say, just get, just get straight to it. Say right then and there. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense? That's why it turns into a scandal. Into a scandal. Straight up. Straight. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Just say what you got to say. Just say what you got to say. You know what I'm saying? Say what you need to say. Whatever the hell that song is. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But when they sit there and they go, oh, no, nah, we can't tell. We can't tell nobody nothing. And then they hold on to it for 50 some odd years. And then the truth comes out. The whole world goes, everything's been a lie. My life's been a lie. I don't know what to do with myself. That's literally what happens. Yeah. So everyone, everyone was like, we have to do math this way now. What? 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 Math isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Just imagine that. Imagine that math has been wrong the entire time. Two You're plus all plugged into a machine right now. Two plus two e doesn't equal four. <laughs> Boom. Everybody aneurysms. <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> anyway just saying might as well get straight to the point speak of the truth baby speak of the truth get straight to the point but anyway me i would rather have a government tell me what's up what's going down here it is y'all there it is there is no we america's not really in trillions of dollars in debt we just been lying so that you guys keep working out here you know what i'm saying so that you know we've been faking the funk just to let every, all these other countries know because they don't we don't want them to know we rich up in this piece yo mm. no see what i'm saying just just say the truth say the truth and just be done with it wouldn't that be what, dope? Spokes, what <laughs> spokesman would they they pick to come out and say it the truth yeah hamburger let me think here they're like Maybe bring here, here to break the news to the entire world. <laughs> oh God! Please let it be that uh that that girl the the Mac and Mac and Mac and Mac 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 Morgan Freeman. Mac I would love it. You know how he say it's so smooth like <laughs> cognac. You know what I'm saying? His voice is so smooth like cognac. He'd just be like, my fellow American. Like, he would just be too cool with it. And we'd be like. Everyone would feel okay. And then it, it, he'd be signing off. And we'd all be like, wait, what, what did he say? I was so busy enjoying his voice. What did he say? What, what did he? <laughs> Scaramucci would be funny, too. Kiss said Scaramucci. Scaramouche, Scaramouche. 
You do the fandango. You know what I mean? Galileo. Right? Isn't that the song? Scaramucci. Yes. Scaramucci. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> Mag and Nanny. Thank you, Mr. Super. You just made my day. <laughs> Thank you, Mag and Nanny. Mick and Nanny. McKinney? McKinney? Mick and Nanny? Mac, I don't even know Mac, what it is. Mac and Nanny? Mick Mac and Nanny. I don't even know. She's just my enemy, enemy, Nanny. Nanny. <laughs> <Nemini. laughs> She, she would, but here's the thing: her or or oh, Jesse Smollett. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, kiss Jesse Smollett. No one believe him. You know what I mean? No one believe his ass. Tell the truth. Like no one would believe him, man. Not They'd nobody. Do another Sesame Street town hall. <laughs> okay, It'd be yeah, Elmo. Yes. Elmo yeah. for the kids. <laughs> You know what I mean? Tickle me, Elmo. You know what I mean? Uh, and then, uh, man, for the for the adults, yeah, I don't know. You know, Trump would be Trump would be somebody who would love to do it though. He probably would be really happy to do that. Going, hey, I'm gonna expose expose the truth. This is huge, huge. I don't want anybody to know this is, except I have to. This is the truth. I can't do Trump, but you know what I'm talking about. He just break it down. Mm -hmm. You know, or maybe we just let Obama do it, let him break the truth, but it would take him 15 minutes to get through one sentence. Right. See what I'm saying? Ah, my fellow Americans, ah, we, ah, and Biden interrupts him. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West comes up. I'm gonna let you finish, <laughs> but I knew about this stuff all day long since day one. I'm gonna let you finish though, Obama. Let me, while, uh, excuse me, hold up. Well, I finished peeing on my, 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 my Grammy. Hold up. <laughs> I knew Something about this. About later. Did, you, did you see that Trump said that he, he may sign an executive order to stop Biden from being able to be elected president? Wait, I'm sorry. Say that again? You lying yeah. like a mug. Please don't do that to me. What? Yeah. Say so, it again. Trump, over the weekend, in an interview said that he's like, Biden can't be your president. He's the worst presidential nominee ever. And he can't be your president. He goes, I, I, I may sign an executive order making it where he can't be president. <laughs> so thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, <laughs> little cliffhanger. Yeah. Can I ask you something? When did he do that? When did he say that uh, trash? Trump executive. Did he just recently say this trash? Because I like didn't over say the, over the weekend, yeah. Bruh. If he could do that, that would be really crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Well, that's yeah, what he called Biden the dumbest of all candidates. Because maybe I'll sign an executive order that you cannot have him as your president. Here it is. Kiss has got a point. He's probably just making a joke. Yeah. And just being stupid. Because that's Trump. Trump is like the ultra ultra troll. Let's just be real. We all know this. Dogs know it. He likes this ish. He eats this stuff up. Num num num. This is this is his gruel every single day. Just num 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 num. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Eating it up, this slurping is, it up Saturday. like cold scrambled eggs. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing to him. But at the same time, <laughs> he's funny as hell. Oh my god! But this is why people like him because they think that he because he's a savage because he doesn't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? He's untouchable. He's clearly untouchable. We talked about this on the uh, the Friday show. And I'm just going to point this out before we wrap up. Because we were supposed to be done a week ago. But anyway, I'm going to say this. If there are, there are sexual assault allegations that are coming out about Trump. Right? There have been, they tried to impeach him. They, they've done everything that they can to try to throw this man under the bus. And him still alive. He is a cockroach. Like if napalm was to drop on this country right now and a full on nuclear war was to happen, he would still be alive standing with the cockroaches. And I don't mean to say that he's a cockroach. I'm just saying he's like a cockroach. There's nothing. He's untouchable, man. He's impenetrable. And if he wins, clear as day, he can do anything he wants. As he said, he's as he said, he's like, hey, I could go on the middle of the street, shoot somebody in the head like Amer Denzel Washington, an American gangster and still get away with it. He is literally proving that every single day. And it's, it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. It's mind blowing. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> Andrew just said Teflon Don. Facts. <laughs> it's scary, though. It's scary. So when you hear somebody, when you hear him throw out a joke like that, part of you goes, ah, ha, ha, that's funny. But then another part of you is like, but can he really do that? Right. <laughs> he might be able to do that. And that's scary. But if he gets to be, if he gets to appoint somebody this quickly after the death of RBG, and she's Republican, and she's part of the Supreme Court, he can do a lot of things. If it's especially if he has control over that particular person, he can do a lot. That's why everybody's freaking out. That's why everybody's tripping right now in regards to him appointing a new person in the Supreme Court this quickly. Of course he's going to do that. Of course he's going to do that. He wants control. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Control! Some Janet Jackson up in this piece with the shoulders and everything. He wants control. So of course he's going to do that. So, It's interesting. Very interesting. But anyway, man, you guys are all dope. You, are, you guys are all incredible. I appreciate everybody who tuned in and was a part of the conversation today. What a crazy ass morning. Holy God. Uh, but before we go, I want to say one more time, may she rest in peace, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. May she forever rest in peace. And we really do appreciate all that she's done for the country and for women's rights and for law. Um, and her services to uh, the Supreme Court. I just hope whoever fills her shoes are able to fill them properly. We're going to see what he does. We're going to see what Trump does in the ne over this week. We'll be watching yeah. and we'll be talking about it. For show, for show. But anyway, it's time to get going. Jack, thank you so much for being on today, my brother. Good seeing you guys. Good talking with you. Uh, we missed you. Um, yeah. so, uh, I will be on tonight at 7 PM central standard time. Talk about a few things. It will be a short show because Tuesday night show is going to be so big and there's so, so much going on. Um, you know, there's a lot that's going to be going on. So I will be on tonight. It will be a little bit shorter of a show. Um, but just be on the lookout 7 PM central standard time. I will be on here. Also, the other thing is, is, um, Andrew just said this. Uh, he said, sorry, Pascal, didn't get a notification. I'll rewatch stream anyway. Thanks for the work you do. Thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate that. Chucka, it was very nice to meet you, my brother. Thank you so much for being on, Chucka. Um, Mr. Super, Boo, 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 uh, Kiss, Ducky Moma, what's up, man? Uh, good evening. Uh, you know, Tanu Vane, Michelle, uh, and everybody else I've missed, Blake, uh, Yes. And everybody else I may have missed throughout the conversation. Thank you guys so much for commenting and being part of the conversation. I will be on at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So be on the lookout for that. I might open the phone lines. I might throw up the uh, open up the Skype calls. I might just be on the lookout for that. There's a lot to talk about tonight and everything. So I will be on. I will have a pop up video here this evening or uh, here this afternoon uh, talking about this. Uh, another gentleman that had died in the hands of the police, a white man. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that too. He, t he was tased over 53 times in the course of nine minutes. Oh, wow. Yes. We're going to be talking about that here very, very shortly. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, yes. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being on today. I'll see you guys here soon at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys tonight. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. Ms. Feinberg, I'd really appreciate it if you would close your legs. Do you find it distracting? Power, respect. The first of us crash in the streets. Deception, the feckers, and leaks. Entertainers are talking for tweakers and losing their circles. They're nothing unique. All of us under surveillance. There was a feeling that made it. Half of us stumbled the road and they faded. They live in the world that's the great for people that's constantly hated. But you see how he makes these S's in his body right here? That's where he's hanging on, and then he's moving forward with the locomotion of his ribs. That is classic 
Missouri rat snake right there. I mean, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab him before he uh, gets into a hole. Now these snakes are not biters. They won't bite as long as you don't squeeze them. If you just stop them like this, it'll freeze them. And then you just gently pull them back. As long as you don't squeeze them, they won't bite. Yo, Mike, what's, what's up, man? Guy? Good to see you, man. Yeah, so sugar fire. Yeah. Fully open, right? Yeah, we're pretty much open. Um, oh, so you can't sit inside yet. Monday, you can sit inside a little bit. We'll have 25% of the tables inside, and then we're letting it rip outside. So I know that there's a lot of people who are really concerned about uh, staying safe and yeah. all that. No, so I don't what are you guys them. doing in regards to that? Well, um, and we have extra people to clean and rub everything down all the time. Everybody inside is wearing masks. And we have those little stickers on the ground so everyone can stay six feet apart. Right on. The tables are all spaced out, inside and outside. Sugar fire, open in full effect right now. They're staying healthy, they're staying clean. Go get you a rack of ribs. Sugar fire, open right now. Thanks. The Fur and Leather Center, providing the highest of fur and leather goods.